near the cross, O Lamb of God, bring its sins before me. Help me walk from day to day with the shadows of me. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my ransom soul shall find rest beyond the river. Near the cross I'll watch and wait, hoping, trusting ever, till I reach the golden strand just beyond the river. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my ransom soul shall find rest beyond the river. For Bob, will you pray for the service, please? Amen. You may be seated. Okay, if you grab the prayer list, you can see it's quite we have quite a list going now. Seems like we can't get to a point where we can take anybody off. A lot of people have a lot of ongoing issues. I do apologize though. I do yeah, but I duplicated the last three there. So if you want to cross through those last three, um, you can do that. That copy and paste sometimes you get kind of confused but uh, anyway but I do have uh, this prayer list I've added since last week I did add uh, if you go down the list you see I added the Powell family of course that is um, the two the the um, the double double homicide uh, that happened I think a lot of you know know this family you may know even know the, the two people that were involved so Pray for that family. Um, also, uh, let's see who else I added here. I think uh, I think that's all. One of the new ones I added. I do want to add Dwayne Yates. Dwayne Yates cut his. I think a lot of us know him. He was coming. He hadn't been here for a while, and the reason is he cut his foot with a chainsaw. And so he's uh, he's in a boot now. Just saw him. Tuesday saw him yesterday and so uh, he was walking in his boot but it has a ways to go to heal um, uh, Charlotte pray for her you know out of their way on the, uh, for her mom's funeral and that will be tomorrow so be praying for that uh, and uh, Ricky just Ricky Schiffer just told me that his sister Juanita and her husband Paul Lowe uh, they lost their son to suicide this past weekend so let's be praying for that situation as well. Um, and so I do believe that was all that I had added. It is Friday. Okay. Okay. So I got, I got bad information. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. So it is Friday. Okay. I, I have her on here, and I do understand that she's having trouble doing the therapy because she can't stand up long enough after the hip surgery. So it can be a while, you know, trying trying to do the therapy. Okay, uh, do we have any updates on any of these? If you see on the list, so any. Anybody else to add? Mm -hmm. Bunny Collins, that's Dale Collins' wife. She fell on concrete, and she has a compressed fracture vertebrae, and they're going in and concrete that. She's in a mental 
Yeah. Linda. Amen. Yes. And we still have her own here, so we'll just keep her own here. Is she going? To she's already had the surgeries, yes. so we're just waiting on for the eye. eye. Then she'll have surgery on the other eye. Yes. Okay. Good. We'll keep that on there. Okay, anyone else we need to ask? Probably need to add yourself, you see, because you've been having some trouble, haven't you? I have. Yeah, you've been falling? I have been falling backwards. I have a balance problem, and uh, I've been to a neurologist, they want me to go to a therapist and just see if they help me. He doesn't know what can help me. I don't know what else to do. I've fallen seven times in two months. Okay. Okay, and then, of course, everybody knows about the situation of the bridge in Baltimore. So, you know, that was a, that was a devastating situation there. So, pray for the, everybody that's involved, the workers, the, the first responders, the people that died, you know, just going to work. People that were working on the bridge died. They were just filling in potholes, you know, and just, just pray for that whole situation there, too. All right, then. If that's, if that's it, we just go, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we uh, come to you tonight, Father, with um, just, just many, many situations, Father, that uh, only you, that only you, Father, can uh, take care of, Father. So we bring these prayer requests to you, these uh, many, many on here, Father, that are that have cancer or or dealing with cancer or, or they are getting treatments. Uh, Father, we just said that you be in each and every uh, situation of these and 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 fulfill the need, Father, that needs to be uh, for each and every one of these people. Father, we also just ask you to be at these uh, people who have lost loved ones, Father. Um, you know, either by just a natural death, Father, or just uh, we've got, got someone here by suicide and. Uh, Father, and just, just uh, Father, we just say we just know that um, you know there's so much evil in the world, and that you know Satan is just uh, you know he is just flourishing all over right now, Father, just 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 doing things, and 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 we just we see it, Father, and, and uh, we but Father, we know that uh, his time is coming, and and one day, Father, and. Uh, and this time we're in, but Father, right now we just need your comfort and, and your help in these situations at this time. Just uh, ask you, Father, be it the all the people that were involved in the accident in Baltimore yesterday, Father, and uh, just the lives that were lost, and just be with those families, and and just be with those workers who are working desperately to uh, remedy the situation there, Father. And as we continue tonight, Father, we just want to. Ask you to be with us, Father. Uh, help us, Father. As I know all each and every one of us probably have challenges and things that we we know we need prayer for, Father, but we just haven't, you know, asked it out loud, Father. But I just pray that you just uh, be with each and every one and our daily needs, and and as you as you promised, Father, you will never leave or forsake us. And so, Father, we 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 uh, we we'll appreciate that. And so, as we continue tonight. I just pray that you be our pastor as he brings us the message and just open our hearts to receive it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and uh, let's turn to 142. Mm -hmm. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains 
lose all their guilty stains, lose all their guilty stains, and sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. The dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his day and there may I though vile as he wash all my sins away wash all my sins away wash all my sins away and there may I though vile as he wash all my sins away dear dying lamb thy precious blood shall never lose its power till all the ransom church of God be saved to sin no more be saved to sin no more be saved to sin no more till all the ransom church of God be saved to sin no more ever since by faith I saw the stream that flowing wounds supply redeeming love has been my theme and shall be till I die and shall be till I die and shall be till I die redeeming love has been my thing and shall be till I die amen good singing okay you have any young people that need do we have anybody here young needs to go to oh we're gonna sit in here today okay the boss has spoken I heard that <laughs> all right <laughs> All right. I, uh, Sunday morning. What a wonderful, wonderful, sweet spirit in the building. And as I was saying goodbye to everybody, I had multiple hands that were raised that were lost, and they didn't come. And so I'm standing at the door, and as I'm standing there, Jaylene walks up to me. And Jaylene said, I got to talk. You got to go talk to me. And I said, you need to get saved, don't you? She raised her hand. She said, yes. And so Susan Frazier got to take Jaylene and pray with her. And she came out all excited. She was born again. And uh, then Cheyenne, who sits right there, Cheyenne came out and she was crying. I said, you need to get saved, don't you? <laughs> yep. And so Chastity got to take her and lead her to the Lord. So she came out crying and already. So both of them are going to be baptized Easter morning after the service. I'm going to baptize both of them. And then we've got possibly two more that have come along. That, and one, I'm, I'm not going to tell you the name. If this works out, we'll surprise the fire out of all of you. All right. Boy, that just makes you want to know, don't it? <laughs> And uh, so we'll, we'll let you know about that, but maybe two more, but maybe you're in here and you'd say, Brother Josh, I am born again, but I've never been scripturally baptized. I've been sprinkled. I've been a whole lot of things, but I've never been baptized. All right. If you'd like Sunday morning, the baptistry is going to be full. And uh, if you'd like to let me know, bring a change of clothes. We'll baptize you on Sunday morning also. All right. What a wonderful way to close out here and all the things in life. All right, take your Bibles, Luke chapter 23, if you would. 
Luke chapter 23. We're going to begin reading with verse 33. It's on page uh, 1110 in your Schofield Bible. Luke chapter 23, and we'll start reading at verse 33. And the Bible says, And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding. And the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew, this is the king of the Jews. And one of the male factors, which was hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other, answering, rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? We indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man had done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the earth until the ninth hour. Let's pray together, and I'll share it. Father, open our hearts again. God, to see you. God, we've, we've become so familiar with everything. Most everything has lost its glory. It's become just something we do. And God, help it never to be that this body that was broken, that, Father, we, we can somehow forget that we could lose touch. So tonight, Father, deal with our hearts again. Draw us closer to you. Make us want to be more like you. And Father, we'll love you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. I, uh, I think one of the greatest things in the world, I will say it, have said it all of my life, one of the greatest things that ever happened to me when I got born again is that I could tell others about Jesus Christ. One of the greatest things that ever happened was I subscribed to the Sword of the Lord paper. I started getting the sword of the Lord, and I, there was a, a group of articles in there, and they were entitled, Let's Go Soul Winning with Jack Hiles. And every, it came out every week at the time, now it's every other week, but I would read an article from Dr. Hiles on soul winning. Somebody he had won to the Lord, how he had been at a service station, or he had been wherever it happened to be, at a hospital, or just visitation, knocking on a random door just to reach somebody. I thought, wow, that sounds exciting. And then Dr. Curtis Hudson came along. And Dr. Hudson was the same way. And Dr. Hudson told that he went to the Sword of the Lord conference. And there at the conference, he heard about soul winning. And he thought, this might work. He went home and started telling people about Jesus. Built the largest church down near Atlanta, Georgia, that was anywhere in the state. Wonderful, wonderful church through soul winning. And so I, I, I tried it out and I found out it's the most exciting thing I've ever seen in my life. I could tell you story after story driving through Madison. I was going to Oak Park Road Baptist Church. It was soul winning night. I was out riding around thinking, who am I going to talk to tonight? And I just saw a house and the Lord said, that one. I pulled in the driveway. When I pulled in the driveway, wasn't nobody at the door. And I looked and there was a man in the backyard. I walked around back, told him who I was and what I was there for. He said, I've been back here in my yard praying, God send me somebody to tell me about you. Whew. I don't know what that does for you, but it lit my fire. 
You understand me? And over and over and over I watch God do that. Now, the greatest example of soul winning you'll ever see in your life is right here. And here, Jesus Christ, beaten to a pulp, beaten beyond any beating a man has ever received. And there on the cross, he wins one more soul. What an incredible thing. He could have ignored him, but no, there he was. And so I want us to look for a moment if somehow we could be like him. If somehow down inside of our hearts, we stop trying to copy everybody else and set our hearts and minds on Jesus Christ. Nothing else. Listen, y'all heard the prayer request. I'm going to tell you, our world's in a mess. All right? When a man could kill his wife and then turn around and kill himself and call his 18-year-old daughter right before he killed himself and told her he loved her and would never see her again. Now you tell me, how does the devil make that happen? How does the devil work in so many lives and change? It's in front of you. Do you understand that? Your family are needing to have a closer relationship with Jesus Christ. And without that, you have nothing. I I want us to walk through this little picture tonight. We look at the picture, and there on that hill are three crosses. And as we begin to look at the crosses, here they are. One of them has a man that's dying for sin. One of them has a man that's dying in sin. And one of them has a man that's dying to sin. Every one of them was different. Sin was prevalent. There it was. But on that cross, you can see all the decisions that have to be made. You can see every life. You're here the same way tonight. Everybody knows about the crosses. You choose which one you want to be like. You choose which one you want to receive. All of those things. See, you begin to look at them. Two of them are guilty. One of them is innocent. Two of them are paying their debt to society. One of them was paying my debt for sin. So you begin to look at all that was there. Jesus Christ, the sinner, dying as was prophesied between two thieves. Isaiah, and I can tell you already ahead of time, uh, Sunday morning, Sunday morning worship, I'm going to preach from Isaiah 53. I love Isaiah 53. That has to be one of the most heart-wrenching pieces of Scripture you could ever wrap your arms around. If you could somehow embrace that alone, it would change your entire life. And and I'm going to preach from there. But in verse 9, he says, He made his grave with the wicked. Now think about this. Isaiah prophesying exactly what was going to go on. Here's a unique picture. All right? Three men were condemned to die. They were going to have the crucifixion. Three men were already set up to die there. There was a cross for the one thief that was there. There was a cross for the other thief that was there. But there was that center cross. Y'all know whose cross that was? That was Barabbas' cross. Barabbas was supposed to die right there. That cross was the cross of one of the most wicked men around That was his cross. The soldiers were ready for this man Barabbas to be killed and they were going to hang him there. And there hung Jesus Christ on a cross that was labeled for Barabbas. Huh. Hmm. Wait a minute. I believe that cross was also labeled for Josh Shiflett. That cross was also labeled for every one of you. You know, I've thought of this often. Everyone, think a moment with me. Barabbas was supposed to die there. You know when he heard the soldiers coming and they called his name? You know what he knew? It was going to be time for him to be nailed to a cross. He came out of there with all the anger and the bitterness, the hatefulness that he had. He was a wicked man. He was a murderer. And here he comes out. He's going to be killed. And they bring him through the door and they say, Barabbas... You're set free. Now I can't imagine down inside. I know he stayed around to watch. I know he watched to see who was going to be nailed. See, he heard outside people hollering, crucify him, crucify him. He thought it was him. 
But he walks outside and he watches them take the body of Jesus Christ. Nail Jesus Christ to his cross. Any one of you tell me where in the Bible you can ever find a reference to Barabbas again. Tell me where he came to one of the disciples and said, tell me how to know this man Jesus. Show me where he ever came. You know that man knew it was his cross and turned away, had no gratitude whatsoever, no anything down inside of him. But wait a minute, are we any less guilty? Shame on us. Shame on us. It was my cross. And I am obligated to the one that died on my cross. I owe him every part of my life. I should have died on that cross. I should stand right now before you condemned. I should stand with no hope, no life, no anything. Because Jesus Christ died for me. Here he is there. We go to the cross and we watch Jesus. And all of the humiliation, all of the shame, all of the ridicule, here he is on the cross, and he's got time to win one more soul. Now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. Nobody in here is to raise your hand. How many of you are sitting in here? Please don't raise your hand. Have never led one soul to Christ. You've never stopped your life to interfere your life to tell somebody else about Jesus. You've never walked up, prayed with, led somebody else to the cross where Jesus died for them. Shame on us, right? I want you to watch him for a moment. I want you to see, number one, I want you to see the absolute compassion of Jesus Christ. You know, the thieves that were there, both of them did mock him for a while. The one of them realized what he was doing. But in Matthew 27, 44, the thieves also, which were crucified with him, cast the same in his teeth. They were all mocking him. They were all shaming him. They were ridiculing him. Who do you think you are? You actually think you're God Almighty. Look at you. You're nothing. And they shamed and they said all manner of things. Never answered. Never had. You understand something? You do more shame to shame the cross of Calvary, sometimes defending yourself, that you become just like them. You understand me? I don't, I don't have to defend anything. I've got a God in heaven who will take care of everything. All right? And so we understand, here he is. They're mocking. They join with the crowd. And then in verse 39 here in Luke, we saw that the one was very bitter. Look, and one of the male factors which was hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. Did he want it for Christ or himself? How much in our life do we shamefully simply want for ourselves? We say it in the guise of, of following after Christ, but oftentimes who's it for? It's for ourselves. And here he is, he's trying to show them. See, they joined with the crowd. And Jesus, when you began to look at him, in the midst of all of this going on, his compassion on those that were crucifying him, when he looked down at them, they are, they are mocking, they are railing, they are doing all manner. And he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Now you and I can say, forgive someone. I forgive. But do we? Be honest with me. How many people have you told you forgave them, but down in your heart you didn't? You still. It's there. Do you know when he said, I forgive, he forgave. That's a complete. you know it was gone? It was gone from the record. I often had wondered, and it just dawned on me, that that man that was taking those spikes and driving them into his hands... And driving that spike through his feet. I often wondered how that that man would stand before God one day. Being the man that nailed him to the cross. But Jesus Christ said I forgive. Now watch. When we stand judgment one day. Who is it that we stand before? Through Jesus Christ. We stand before him. And he's already forgiven. You know he won't even remember that that man did that. He'll know that man. But that won't be the part that will send him to hell. You know what will send him to hell? Rejecting Jesus as Savior. 
You understand what I'm saying? Down inside of our lives, I, I want you to watch this. I mean, it's so much there. And if you can imagine how like him it was in his whole life that he walked upon this earth, what did he do to all those that mocked him? He forgave them. He came along and he forgave. You know, I think it's time if we want to watch Christianity bloom, it's time to die to yourself. I've preached it so many times when Paul said, I die daily. We become so offended at everything when it's not about you. It's about him. And our offense can somehow destroy someone else being able to get born again because of what we do. How wonderful if we could see others with the same type of compassion that he had on us. Do you remember when he came to you? Do you remember? Everybody in here. Do you remember when you got born again? You can go to the spot. All right, all right, just, just tell me something. Before you came to him, what were you worth? What was your life? Who were you living to take care of? You. But nothing about you. If you didn't like it, you didn't do it. If you liked it, you did as much as you want. And you didn't care who cared. It wasn't about them. Then all of a sudden you met this man named Jesus. And he came and looked at you. You know what he said? I forgive. And down inside, that moment I trusted Jesus Christ, I knew I was forgiven. I, I don't know about you. I don't know what it did to you, but I know what it did to me. And I was forgiven and I knew I was. And I have never in my life had, I'm, I'm telling you, the, the sensation of salvation. And it, it's not about feeling. But I'm married and I love my wife and there's feeling. All right, I love my wife. That, that's a wonderful feeling. I love Jesus. That's a wonderful feeling. But you know the greatest feeling? He loves me back. She loves me back. It's kind of funny. The other day, Barbara and I were talking. And she said, you know something? I'm glad I still love you. <laughs> she said, you love me. But that's your feeling. I'm glad I get to love you. All right? Because that's her feeling. Do you know the same is true of Christ? We walk around and we all know that God loves us. What a wonderful thing. He loves me. But do you love Him? See, that's your part of the equation. That's part of your relationship. All right? All of those things. So watch. All right? So we watch and we see His compassion. But let's take another look at the thieves for a moment. All right? Watch this now. Here are these two thieves. What are their names? Do you realize when we get to heaven, I, th I thought this over, when we get to heaven and we walk up to this guy and we can say, who are you? He said, oh, I'm the thief. He's the one that made it. The other one won't be there. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll know. Yeah. Now think about, oh, yeah, which thief? Yeah, oh, I was the one on the cross. Yeah. You know, think about that. There are so many people. We don't know their name. His name is not important because you can put your name there. All right? God makes it wide open for you and I. How old were they? Were they young people? Were they old people? Doesn't matter, does it? I, I, what I'm trying to show you doesn't matter. All of those things. What kind of background did they have? Did, did it come up? Well, I wouldn't have done what I'd done if my mom and daddy had loved me. No, that, that's just a poor excuse. All right, you are what you are. All right, and, and be what you are and understand that. All right, all right, what I'm trying to show you, that it's not about background. Do you realize how many different backgrounds that are in this building on Sunday mornings? Go to the different places. See what it's like. Understand their lives. All right, understand the lack of knowledge of a lot of things. All right, but all of them relative to one thing. I don't care what your name is. I don't care how old you are. I don't care what your background is. If you'll come to Jesus, he'll change your life. If we could believe that, if we could somehow understand that, of what it's all like, here they are. You begin to look. We don't know any of those things. The only thing that we do know about them, they were both guilty and they both deserve to die. Kind of like us. All right? 
Now difference begins to show. The one continues to mock. But verse 40. But the other answering rebuked him saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? This is the craziest thing you've ever thought. All right? That man became a soul winner before he got born again. All right? He's on the cross. He hadn't turned to the Lord yet. He hadn't asked the Lord about the forgiveness yet. He looks at the other thief. He knew what was happening down inside of his heart. He looks at the other thief and said, don't you know you're in the same condemnation? You know what's wrong with the majority of church people today? They have never felt condemned. Everybody's okay. Everybody's pretty good. Most of them, like I told you, I've told a whole lot of them, you ain't pretty and you ain't good. Right? Ain't it? I, I'm serious. No. You, you, it, that's not it at all. Last Saturday morning, when the woman sat right there, and she told me, well, I've been pretty good. I like to hope, think I'd get to heaven. But no, that wasn't it at all. She needed Jesus, and she trusted Him. What I'm saying, guys, why don't we somehow begin to look at our family and our friends and allow them to hear from our mouths, don't you understand you're as guilty as anybody else? That all of these people, watch. You know why the majority, what's the number one excuse you get from people that won't come to church? Too many hypocrites in the building. Just tell them we've got room for one more. You understand what I'm saying. All right, we have made excuse to not receive Christ. We've made excuse to not see Him. And it's become about everything else. And what I just want you to see, here they are on the cross, here are these thieves, and you've got this one thief that's railing, and the other thief looks at him and said, hey, don't you know we are under the same condemnation? Now, what is it that brought this conviction on a thief on a cross. What is it that made him all of a sudden change his mind? Why would he stop railing on him? Why would he stop doing the things he was doing? And all of a sudden he wants something else. I believe this. He compared himself to Jesus. Because he said it. We justly. But this man has done nothing wrong. You know, if somehow, honestly, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I, if, if we could come to a point that we could actually reveal Christ through our lives, that people know what you are, know what you're doing, all of those. You know, I'm, I'll, I'll tell you something, and I want everybody in here to understand this. If you go to work and you first off tell people you're born again, you know what they're all going to start doing? They're going to watch you. They're going to watch everything about you. All of a sudden, you now live in a glass house. And everybody sees. And they want to find you doing something wrong. All right? That way they can say, see, and they have a reason for not doing. You know, I think it's time that we truly understood that. I think you ought to leave your house every day realizing that everything about you represents Him. Uh, look, do people out there make you mad? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you're standing in the grocery line and it happens you get in the line that that one little woman up there who wants to talk to everybody about their kids. And you're standing there. And she ain't checking nobody out. She ain't doing nothing. And what you're reflecting is what everybody is seeing. Do you think people are watching you? Yeah, they are. They want to see how you react. All right, you need to join in with whatever they're doing. See, he looked, we indeed justly, but this man. I want you to see what it does. It enables us to see ourselves. All right, I love, if you want to go back with me, I love Isaiah chapter 6. All right, it's page 718 if you want to run there. I, I just, one of my favorite Chapters 53, of course, in Isaiah, 9, chapter 9 in Isaiah, but chapter 6 
is such a great chapter. And, and it starts off in verse 1. He says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. All of a sudden that he's seeing something. Uzziah, Isaiah's friend, had died. But when he died, he got a glimpse of God. And he saw the holiness of God. Now shame on us because of the holiness of God. Have we, now y'all just be honest with me, have the majority of churches so did away with the holiness of God? Come inside and God's like a big brother. No, if, if my God's just like a big brother, I don't have a God. I want a God that's high and lifted up. I want a God that's holy. And here he had this holy God. And look what happened when he did. Look at verse 5. Then said I, woe is me, for I'm undone. Because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people with unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. He comes to him, he cleanses him there. In verse 8 he says, And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Oh my word, y'all. I don't know what it does to you. But to be able to go before a holy God and say, Here am I, send me. God, I volunteer. God, I open myself. God, I give you my life. Here I am. I take away all restraints. There's nothing on it. There are no stipulations. Father, I'm yours. Oh, my word. To come to that point. Now, that's a costly point to come to. You understand me? When you'll release everything. But this man, on the cross, had come to a point. He saw himself, I ought to die. He saw Christ, he's done nothing wrong. See, one tuned God out, the other listened. All right? I, I'm just trying to show you. I don't know where you are. I don't know your life. You can tune God out and God will not bother you. But if you'll listen, he'll speak. All right? One tuned out his own conscience. The other responded. They knew Christ had done nothing wrong. They knew the mockery of the trial. They knew all of the things that were there. See, when you began to look, and that's what I want us to do, somehow, if we could write this moment, see ourselves. Where are we? What am I doing with my life? How am I spending it? Who am I going to influence? Watch, watch. And, and I, I say these things all the time. But the woman that I led to the Lord Saturday, years ago, probably 30, oh, more than that, probably 40 years ago, that woman that I led to the Lord right there rode my bus to Sunday school. All right? The Cheyenne that got born again, 40 years ago, her mother rode my bus to Sunday school. I'm telling you something. It's going to cost you your life. All right? Know it right up front. This part-time Christians just don't work. And I, I'm, I'm, I honestly, I tire of part-time Christians. They, they'll do if they want. They back away if they don't want. They're in, they're out, they're up, they're down. As old brother Don used to preach all the time, they're about like a termite in a yo-yo. All right? That's not the way it should be. There's got to be a consistency about your life or you'll never see the reflection years later. All right, it takes years. It takes all that time. I, I, I'm going to tell a story again. Uh, Gaither Taylor. Oh, Gaither uh, grew up with him. And uh, Gaither was in a bad wreck. And his head was injured so bad that Gaither forgot all of his childhood. He, he knew he knew me, but he didn't know really how he knew me. And all the things about it. Well, Gaither lived in one of the trailer courts down in, in Ruckersville. And my bus went through there and picked up kids every Sunday morning. 
And Gaither, Gaither is real short, real big. He had long hair and a full beard. I told all the kids on the bus it was a gorilla. And so they would watch for him. We'd ride through and Gaither would be out there waving. And so I'd give them cookies. And I told them they were gorilla cookies. They were to throw them to the gorilla as they rode through. And they would throw cookies to Gaither. And I was after Gaither all the time coming to church. He said, I'm coming. Honestly, I'm coming. One day I'm coming. I said, okay. I kept after him, kept after him. It was something like 20 years later. Gaither walked in, said, see, told you I was coming. <laughs> he got born again. His wife got born again. It's the neatest thing in the world. What I'm saying, you're in or you're out. All right? One thief said, I'll take my life even though I have nothing left. Even though I am a thief, I would rather die on a cross than give my life to Jesus. And I'm watching it today. People that rather have their lifestyle of their dance halls, their drugs, their alcohol, all of those things, they would rather die than give their life to Jesus Christ. Now watch. Number three. I want you to see this conversion, okay, of this thief. Verse 42 again. The Bible says, And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. All right, all of a sudden, you begin to look at him, and something has happened. He has watched this man. He's heard all of the sayings of the cross, seven sayings that are there that Jesus uttered while he was there. And watching him and hearing him, conviction came. Now, I want you all to know something. Conviction always precedes conversion. If there is no conviction, there is no conversion. If you can't tell me how that God convicted you to be born again, I would dare say you're not born again. All right? You can say anything. You can pray any prayer. I have watched groups of people do this, and I go to groups of kids and stand 20 kids in front of them and say, hey, listen, how many of y'all want to go to hell? No. How many want to go to heaven? Yeah. Well, repeat after me. One, two, three, repeat after me. That don't get you to heaven. All right, there was no conviction. Without conviction, there's no conversion. This man started off railing. All of a sudden, he watched. Down inside of his heart, he knew that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. And down inside, he looks at him, and he goes to him. See, he admitted his sin. Simple as that. Any sinners in this room? How about a room full? Everybody in this room is a sinner. I don't care who you are. I don't care anything about you. Everybody in this room is a sinner. Till you own it, then you'll never get rid of it. You'll wear it all the rest of your life. You'll hang on to it, and it'll condemn you. See, he accepted Christ as Lord. Because even in his prayer, Lord, remember me. All of a sudden, he had, he had taken lordship away from him own self, and had given it to him. You can't rule and him rule also. He had never seen a miracle. He'd been in jail. But you know what he did? He believed in miracles. Greatest miracle. The greatest miracle that's ever happened is the salvation of a soul. The greatest miracle when a man or a woman will bow their heads, confess Jesus Christ, ask for, convic uh, for uh, 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 forgiveness of their sin. And that moment, the Holy Ghost of God comes and lives inside of your heart. Now, you say, Brother Josh, explain that scientifically. Nope. Nope. Nothing to do with science. It's all got to do with a love affair. It's all got to do with John 3, 16. That God so loved the world. That He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever, what's the next word? Believeth. That's a big word, isn't it? See, it's not a simplistic word. That's a big word. Believe it means that you realize you're condemned. 
and you want salvation. Believeth in him, shall not perish, but have. I believe that with all of my heart. You see, he saw Christ. He called him Lord. He faced death, and he believed in a resurrection. Y'all know how many people in this room are going to die? Everybody in this room? You understand that? You're going to die. And you need to believe that there is a resurrection. There's got to be a tomorrow. Or well, what's today got? I mean, if all it is is getting older and dying, then it's nothing. But if there's a tomorrow, if there's an eternity, if there's a heaven, if the glory of God is there, if your family can go, if all of those things are real, and they are, then what a glorious thing. Then all of a sudden, sicknesses and cancers and all of that, they go away. See, the Lord's response to him, verse 43. I want you all to see this. Now, salvation is a tough thing, ain't it? But you probably got to go to college to learn how to be saved. He looked at him and he said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him in verse 43, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Man, that was a huge transaction, wasn't it? You don't know the size of that transaction. That that man all of a sudden, he was within hours of dying. Now watch. It's this, this is, the Bible records that at that moment he got born again. The next verse, what happened? Darkness covered the entire earth. All right, at that moment, all of the sins of the world were placed on Jesus Christ. God himself could not look at Jesus because of sin. That's where he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But he had sinned. Who sinned, y'all? Mine. My sins killed him. Your sins killed him, but I can't do anything about your sins. I'm the one that's got to do like that thief. I'm guilty. He's righteous. Lord, Remember me. And in all essence of heart, it's got to be a part of who you are. And if, now I'm just going to tell you something now. How long did it take him to get to heaven? Well, paradise. He died. He was there. Just that quick. Within hours, he was there. Now, you and I, I don't know the conviction in your heart. But you realize as he was dying, he was dying with hope. I think he died smiling. All right. I uh, heard an undertaker say that people come in and ask, what was the expression on the face of my loved one when you picked them up? Now, y'all hear me. I've watched... This is horrible, but it's true. I've held the hands of so many people dying. I've looked in their eyes. I've had people that were dying. And they're holding me by the hand. And it's almost like the sweetest time they've ever had. I've got a cousin. Everybody called him Honey. And I was holding Honey by the hand. Me and Honey done sat there while he was dying and planted all kinds of tomato plants. He'd tell me how he planted them, and I'd tell him how I planted them, and we would laugh and talk, and he was dying. And when it got time, he just kind of looked at me and smiled and went to heaven while I had him by the hand. Now, I watched that, but I can't tell you all the horror I've seen when I've seen the emptiness in people's eyes, when there was nothing there, and all I saw was fear. And they looked at me in their face. And it was like, help me. No, no. I can't do anything now. I'm sorry. It's, it's done. All that I've said, all that I've told you, it's done. You didn't receive it. And now, there you are. One man died that way. Screaming. 
The other man just gave up and went on to heaven. All right. I don't know if you see what I see. Jesus died and lived reaching souls. I think it's time you and I began to care again. I think it's time. It's not about your life walking along. It's not just about you and what you get out of life. I think it's about time you and I looked around at this world and said, I need to make a difference. I'm born again. I was condemned. He allowed me to live. Is that not you? Is not the picture for you? Two crosses on either side. One chose life. One chose self. I don't know where you are. But I'm telling you, you're going to live, die by what you choose. And I think it's time we choose Jesus. I think it's time we make him Lord of our lives. I think it's time we made it real in our own hearts. Somebody else needs you to be able to tell them about him. And that's our life. That's what we owe him. Let's pray together and I'll let you go. Father, thank you. God, you died there for me. God, you gave yourself so I could have life, but not just me, God, so that my wife could live, so that my children could live, my grandchildren could live, great-grandchildren could live. God, thank you for a tomorrow through trusting you. And Father, help me each day of my life to die to my will, to die to self, and God, to live only unto you. Father, bless us. Make us what we ought to be. God, start a fire down inside of our hearts. May we actually see the difference between those two men and make the comparison to ourselves. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Nobody's looking but me. But you're in here tonight. I don't know your choice. You either choose life or you choose death. Tonight, if you'd say, Brother Josh, you know something? I truly never have been born again. I've been churched. I've been a lot of things. But I've never truly been born again. And tonight, I want to trust Jesus. Let me see your hand right now. All I want to do is pray for you. Anyone in here tonight? Amen. Father, send us out. God, the most holy week. God, we're right now, we're looking forward to and thinking about the ultimate sacrifice that you made. Father, may it be about our mouth, our heart, our lips. God, may we tell this world what we are truly celebrating. Bless us now, even as we go. And Father, we'll love you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, now listen, Sunday morning, don't forget about sunrise service. All right, Saturday, the lady's going to be doing some work starting at 10 o'clock.